Aloha from beautiful Maui. Today with me for a number of episodes of tech, I have Don McGuire, who is the CMO of uh, Qualcomm. And if you joined us last week, we talked about the return to Maui and uh, how to do it responsibly and ethically and really in support for the community. Today, we're going to talk about tech and uh, some of the announcements that have been made here and how they're going to help really make sure that the next era of AI is effective. Before though, how was the return? How was the first day of summer? Uh, the first day of summer was incredible. I think that all the work that we did that we talked to you about previously, Carolina, really paid off. Um, I think the island has welcomed us back with open arms. Um, and you've just seen nothing but amazing hospitality. Uh, it's a little hotter uh, <laughs> than, long, than yeah. what we're used to with Snapdragon Summit. But um, other than that, you know, zero complaints. Just a really magnificent time. I, I was really touched by opening ceremony um, for the people yesterday where Kangaroo and our audience who know who I'm talking about, who's a Hawaiian culturalist, said, uh, but basically, the chant that they did was about saying that we as an audience are coming with good intention, with respect, and with really the aloha spirit. And I thought that was very touching, and I'm sure that everybody here has that spirit. It was fascinating to me that the first person I, local person I met, it was a mom and daughter of a, a jewelry store just outside the hotel. And the first thing that she said to me was, Thank you for being here. I know people tell you not to talk, but we're so grateful for your business and to get back on our So, and, and we both got emotional for it. So, clearly, the advice that you were given is uh, is stay back and that we make a different thing. We planted, yeah, we planted seedlings, over 500 seedlings um, that'll go to kind of repopulate the, some of the burnt areas. Yeah. Um, up near Lahaina, uh, that was it, it was fun because it was like a fun little activity as part of our welcome reception. Yeah. Um, so again, we're integrating volunteerism and giving back, but we're not doing it in a way where people are finding it disruptive, right, to the event and or you know um, overly overbearing, right? It's it's hey, do you want to plant a seed too? And and people found it really fun. I did like five, so it was great. I'm looking forward to it as well. There is a volunteer applicant. Yes. That. Let's switch gear uh, and talk tech. Okay. And you know that when we talk tech, it's less about the speed, it's more about the difference that it makes to uh, the human being on society. So I want to start with the excitement around the new platform exiting, uh, that is really not just the energy of the free market, but it's really, in my view, talking about democratizing AI. Tell me why that matters and how you think about that. Um, it's, you know, it's, there's so many things to unpack here, but I think from a PC platform perspective and what that's going to manifest into this new generation of AI enabled PCs, there, there's two pieces of the public. There's the productivity piece and there's the creeps. And because of the AI layers that will be layered on top of those two activities, for lack of a better word, one primarily being driven by Copilot and the other by Adobe um, and, and the creative tools with Firefly. It's really going to change the way people utilize these devices, um, both from a creative process and flow perspective, but also from you know just getting things done, being productive. And, and um, it'll break open, I think, accessibility as well um, to not only functionally, where you may not have felt you could be as creative, but now you feel like you're more creative. Um, I think the ability for trans creation um, and, and beyond localization of content, it's going to be really cool. You can make things more relevant. I was at Max last week uh, in LA, holding my mom. And so the fact that XMP is going to be a powerful platform to enable these tools to come to life and bring this new capability to people um, is going to be, you know, one of the things that's going to democratize not only the way people can be productive and be creative, um, but also then the output of it, right, is going to, I think, I don't want to stretch and say, make the world a better place, but it's really going to 
make things more relevant for people and, and make them feel more attached to whether it's the content they're they're ingesting um, or digesting um, or whether it's the productive output. Let's say it's a presentation we have to go communicate to somebody in a different country or of a different background and you want to tailor, customize that content to make it relevant to that audience. I think that's amazing. Yeah, and I think that the other part is that the more people are coming to the table, the more from the data perspective that you can find in the AI, right? You know, you create that, that vicious circle that makes it where that the AI is the people in the Everybody might play a song and love the people that are the world. So I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about the fact that you are able to ask us on the AI and the phone and the AI and the AI and the car. You are able to one other part that, uh, you know, when we're talking about AI is coming up more and more is um, you know, the cost of running AI, you know, you know, financial, that's one point, but really from more from a, a power perspective. And so the power efficiency of everything is also super critical. And, you know, I care about some abilities. So that is something else that you know, some numbers, but that kind of looking away. Right? Yeah, we we sort of dropped a a, a, a big uh, ray of sunshine on, on the on the market yesterday, which was fantastic. But the power equation and the power story is so important. Um, you know, so often we get caught up in people performance numbers and single thread fits and multi threaded bad and yeah, it's great, you have to their chest, but to, to perform tasks or to create an environment where people can raise their level of productivity or raise the experience of whether they're playing a game or they're trying to manipulate a 8K video, right? Or trying to you know, edit a film. To be able to do that very power efficient way um, for a long period of time uh, and not have to worry about charging the device, but also just Taking less power from the grid, taking power away from the resources, is amazing. And in some of the statistics we show, 80% lower power, you know, 30% lower power, depending on the, the configuration, is pretty phenomenal. Because especially in the on-device and hybrid AI world, if AI is not sustainable, and everything has to go to um, because there's not enough data centers, and there's not enough power for those data centers, there's not enough water to cool those data centers. So um, I, I think there's a strong sustainability message in, along with personalization and safety and privacy and yeah. those types of things, with with deploying a hybrid model and leveraging the power of on-base AI, especially now that we're at the 13 billion parameters, right, on our piece of platform alone, I mean, there's a lot that can be done without even touching the cloud. Yeah, and, and I think from an enterprise perspective, um, there's going to be a lot of things, but you know, from wheels one to see two. For an enterprise, you're talking about having thousands of you know, Indians, multinational of people that are using more power than uh, devices. It's going to help you get your yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, another kind of positive and negative of AI is there's a lot of excitement. And it's one cheap part. And I like that, that yesterday one of the things we talked about was uh, the example of Zip that now you are able to actually enable uh, pictures that have been manipulated by AI or generated by AI, and you're also able to uh, give those you know, credit back to the previous chef um, to create the content. And I think that's absolutely great. You know, some people might say that not that would be. Well, I think every, the entire ecosystem has a responsibility. The entire value chain has a responsibility. We can do our part, um, and we can partner with others yeah. and, and, and take feedback from them on how we can make our platforms better to make their job easier in creating these tools. Adobe is a perfect example. Again, what they've done with Firefly to create a safe place um, for creators uh, within the Firefly environment is is amazing, right? It's not ungum. It's not the wild, wild west of AI. Um, and I think to your point about, you know, some of the narratives out there, um, you know, democratization without governance is chaos, <laughs> right? So you gotta have this governance and it's not about over-regulation or anything like that. It's just about 
there has to be a set of standards and rules that people follow. And, uh, you know, TruePick was one, was one example of, of being able to put some governance system so that um, people feel better about A, the tools that they're using, but B, that their IP being protected as well, because people make their living by, like, in some cases, off their IP. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, an artist who's ideating, creating, you know, to get to that final output, whatever that artistic impression of whatever it is they're doing, needs to feel like whatever they're doing, and if they want to use some of these tools to accelerate the process or enhance the process, that they're not going to, at the end of the day, that, that IP is not going somewhere and training some algorithm somewhere, and they're going to see it like in, out in the wild, and they're going to feel like, this is something I created, and now it's just public junk. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important, and I think we can do a lot for a very strong I, I totally agree with you. I think that Google was so strong in the, the, the mindset that starting these software conversations is important. But like you said, obviously, um, you know, it's, it's a partner game and uh, everybody has to be aware of the companies that are talking about uh, this. Uh, one thing that I really appreciated um, you doing was to call out the self driving cybers uh, and uh, the numbers were amazing. But, but also the passion that's right. That's one side of your, if you like, evangelization, marketing, branding. And then you also talk about a bunch of things. How do you, you know, for me, it's two ends of like, not the same marketing approach, right? If you want it more personal, one is personal in a different way than sure. people happen, right, to recall another formula one. For sure. How do you think about that and, and why decided that important as well as the good brands in Well, I think the marketing model has changed so much um, that when you, when you look at creating a mix of, yeah. of activities to achieve your objective, so whether it's you know building brand or building brand value or you know um, higher fund or whatever the activity, the model has changed so significantly in the past five years. You can't deploy just a traditional advertising model, and because you're you're everything has become more technicalized, everything has become more personal, everything has to be relevant to down to the individual level. Um, and fortunately, we've got these tools now that enable us to get. Um, and so when we were looking at the mix, you know, for us, especially since I have this unique opportunity and challenge to market and sell a product that you can't buy, um, uh, you know, and, and in, in my Intel training has taught me well, um, because they did a brilliant job of that for 25 years, um, is, is I have to think of this. And so how do I create affinity and advocacy for a product that you can't go out into a store and purchase? Um, but that is powering some amazing products that are being put into the market by some amazing brands. Um, uh, so, so when we looked at the mix, we looked at two things that we thought were both relevant for today's marketing model, which is community, right, and building advocacy community. And then we looked at what our platforms actually enable, which is people to connect to their passions. And what is more passionate than, than things people associate with themselves with, which in, oftentimes is another form of community, right? Yeah. So, so the Manchester United fan base is a community on its own. So we're building our own Snapdragon insiders, and we're and then we're then we're like kind of attaching ourselves yeah. and our brand tapping into another strong community, and then cross pollinating between yeah. the two. Um, but then leveraging the 1.1 billion fans of Manchester United or all the Mercedes AMG Formula One fans um, or all the fans of, you know, Coldplay when they play in Snapdragon Stadium, all those communities are kind of being leveraged together and then we're drawing this thread to go back with our storytelling and message. Um, so then, you know, raise the level of awareness of preference of advocacy uh, for the brand. And we think it's a really killer topic. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think that it's that part of that story that is also your people's confidence the brand and you want to be want to ask to be a different system broader you know, partners and customers. So. Yeah, absolutely. 
absolutely. It's been a lot of fun. It's a challenge, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, insiders, almost 14 million strong. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just, just amazing. I could never have imagined. Um, and, and now we're looking at how you know we take this robust and, and very large now community and and um, and driving things uh, and and really um, make it worthwhile for these people to engage with us. I think it's really important. It's one thing to go acquire followers, right? It's another thing to engage with a fan base. Yes. And we know that we know the difference. And by the way, we're learning a lot from Antest United from our partners how how they engage their fan base and and applying some of the principles to to snap right insiders. And so it's really been helpful. Um, and it's been a kind of a nice mix and it's highly leveraged, uh, which is nice. Um, and I think we're gonna see you. Uh, Manchester, yeah, right. In a couple of weeks, we're gonna yes. deep dive on the front of the. Yes, that'll be cool. um, I know you've got to run, so one last question is, what are you doing? Oh my gosh! Uh, so it's uh, you have to pick one. I have picked one. <laughs> um, it, right now, I'm I'm most excited about how X3 is going to enable our partners and our partnership ecosystem to reinvent what it means. Sorry, to reinvent the definition of first one. I'm really excited. And I think for marketing as well. So I, About time. <laughs> I know, right? Right? Uh, but what it was clear yesterday was, you know, some I said on, on my post that one thing that you've done over the last few years And yesterday, this is going to be really big on the country and our strong leader, we had like Mark Zuckerberg for himself, you have basically all the OEMs, 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 and and well. So there's so much there that people are counting on you. Yeah, yeah, no pressure. Expectations have been set high. Um, <laughs> nothing like us to set the bar really high. Um, but then it's great and it's gratifying when we deliver. Right. Absolutely. So it's so we're looking forward to seeing that in your first product coming out. So, thank you very much for being here. I know you're going to run. I will take the time. And, uh, and, uh, Always a pleasure. And mahalo, everyone. And follow along for more coverage during Snapout Summit. Thank you.